This is crazy. I've been asked by a lot of people over the last couple of years to talk about M-Drive, which is a spaceship propulsion device that should be impossible. There was some news about a year ago or so of some people who built a homemade M-Drive and it seemed to work, but now NASA has reviewed the papers from that experiment and it seems legit. This is something called peer review and it's very important to the scientific process even though it's really boring to talk about. Peer review is basically when a panel of experts looks at your project and goes over the conclusions and the experiments that you did to make sure that everything's solid. Without going through peer review, it's almost impossible to be taken seriously or get published in any kind of scientific journal. And the M drive has officially made it through peer review, which is amazing because it literally breaks every law of physics. Now I did talk about this in a past video, but I just kind of looped it in with a few other new technologies that NASA's working on. I didn't really focus on it specifically because it was still sort of fringy. So most rockets work on the whole every action produces an equal and opposite reaction principle. But the M drive works by firing microwaves into this conical structure called a frustum. And the microwaves bounce back and forth inside of this, intensifying an energy and thus creating a thrust. But wait, how? Because the microwaves don't travel outside of the engine. There's nothing firing one direction to push the ship the other direction. It's all enclosed in this capsule, so that shouldn't be happening. It's like, imagine if you're in the back of an 18-wheeler. We won't ask how this happened. Let's just go with it. And let's take away the engine. So you're just, you're just a box on wheels. If you were to push against the wall, the truck wouldn't start rolling because you're contained inside the truck. It would be totally insane if you pushed on the side of the truck and somehow that made the truck roll. But that's exactly what's happening with M-Drive. The thrust is only 1.2 micronewtons per watt, which is so small that literally a, a passing gust of air could have caused that thrust. So they tested it again in a vacuum chamber. And yeah. Now we can't yet say that it works because it's only past peer review, but by passing peer review, that takes it out of the list of fringe ideas. And that itself is really cool. Now there are four theories that have been put forth to try to explain why this thing works. And I'm just gonna touch on all of them here. And I'm gonna be completely upfront and honest with you. Uh, I barely understand any of those. Very over my head. Like, it's way, it's way up there. The first one is radiation pressure. This one says the difference in pressure the radiation exerts on the different areas of the cone brings forth something called the Lorentz force, which acts on charged particles to create thrust. Somehow. The next one is vacuum energy. Now this is something that would be called a QVT. A QVT stands for quantum vacuum thruster. This is a theoretical engine idea that works off of quantum vacuum fluctuations to create low density plasma through a process called magnetohydrodynamics. You know, that old chestnut. Now some also point to pilot wave theories, which is a non-mainstream interpretation of quantum mechanics as a way to explain it pushing off of the quantum vacuum to create thrust. The third is quantized inertia. A physics professor named Mike McCullough created an explanation that he calls quantization of inertia. Now this relies on a theoretical type of energy predicted by general relativity called UNRWA radiation, which an accelerating body would experience as black body radiation. And at very low acceleration, the wavelength of UNRWA radiation can actually be longer than the observable universe, at which point it has to become quantized. Problem is, this assumes that UNRWA radiation is real, which it's never been proven, and it would also require that the speed of light would change inside the chamber, which is not supposed to be possible. But as crazy as this one sounds, it is actually testable, so there are some experiments going on right now to try to work this one out. And last but not least is photon leakage. And this one, I might actually understand. Now this relies on the wave particle duality of photons in the chamber so that as they bump into each other and combine, they can destructively interfere with each other, which removes their electromagnetic field around them, but allows the two photons to pass through the chamber wall, which means that there is actually photons escaping out the back of this thing, which would actually provide a little bit of thrust. I'll put links to all these down in the description so you can read them and figure them all out yourself. Like I said, it's way over my head. School me if you can, but let's just assume for a second that it does actually work. What does this mean? Well, it's very, very small thrust, but because it's constant acceleration, the speed increases exponentially. So while it may take a really long time to get going, over time, it can reach incredible speeds. But a drive that doesn't require propellant does more than just, you know, open up the universe to us. It also offers up some just mind-blowing possibilities. 
You could basically create a perpetual motion machine. If you set up a giant wheel-like structure in space with these engines pointing it in a rotational direction, over time, you could get enough spin going on that thing that you could actually use that to generate energy. Free energy! After the cost of building the giant wheel in space, of course. Now this could be the beginning of a whole new technology. It could all fizzle out. We don't really know. There's only been a few people that have built this thing and it hasn't really been like optimized for performance or anything like that yet. But at its current state, it really doesn't produce enough thrust for it to really be feasible on any kind of missions that we would be doing like inside the solar system. It wouldn't be comparable to an ion drive per se unless it was just on a really, really long term like deep space mission. So we'll see. But more fascinating to me, even if this drive is not, you know, feasible or practical, this harnessing of the quantum world to improve things in our world is really amazing to me. There are things, energies and matters, hidden underneath the surface of reality, and whether it's things like M drive or quantum computers, we are just dipping our toes into this chasm of ignorance that's always separated the quantum world from our world. And that's friggin' awesome. So again, I've got uh, links down in the description for you guys to go and research this yourself. A lot of this is just super in-depth, and I know you guys are super smart, so you could probably talk it all up in the comments and discuss which one of these different explanations makes the most sense to you. All right, like and share this video if you liked it to help spread this around to other people. If this is your first time here, hit subscribe. I got other videos just like this all over the damn place. And if you really want to be my hero, you can join the over 50 people who are sponsoring this channel on Patreon and making a huge difference to my life and helping me to put more of these out there. I really appreciate you guys' help. Now, everybody go out and have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next time. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.